Oh, and lastly, speaking of IDW, this is um, a little bit disturbing. Who dug this up? Uh, Wild Girders, or classic, uh, also known as Classical Liberal on YouTube. Will? Or on, a, on a Twitter, sorry. All right, well, uh, hat tip. This is a, um, from a podcast in 2016. Uh, polite Conversation Podcast. Uh, it's Sam Harris being interviewed, I guess, by uh, Ainid... Muhammad, is that her yeah, name? Yeah, Aina Muhammad. She run, Play Conversation started as, she was sort of like on this new atheist type of thing. She's, a, I think, from Pakistan, and she's been sort of like, um, she's been censored by religious authorities herself, so she was sort of like kind of on that side of things. But this is about where the split with her and sort of Sam Harris comes from. Where Oh, uh, is that right? Yeah. So this, uh, this conversation happens with sort of her as a, sort of like fan or previously a fan of Sam Harris. Yeah. And she's saying like, you know, she's talking about, I think uh, Dave Rubin had uh, on uh, this woman. What was her name? Uh, Anna Marie Waters. Anna Marie Waters, who was the woman that Nigel Farage, who is, um, you know, uh, an a-, a virulent anti-immigrant. And I think some in Britain would say, um, uh, could charge him with racism. Is that right? Uh, Nigel Farage uh, says uh, on this clip here it says Anne Marie Waters, who won twenty one point three percent of the vote in the UKIP leadership election, said she left after she and her supporters were branded quote Nazis and racists by Nigel Farage and Henry Bolton. Now uh, Nigel Farage is somebody who I think um, uh, people in Britain would well, also say is racist. Yeah, right? I think people have definitely said that. Now um, and so she must be. Um, if that's the case, I mean, you know, what is that, a second order racist? I don't know. Uh, certainly controversial, uh, without a doubt. And it ex- you would expect her to be called upon that if the leader of her own party called her uh, Nazis and racist, according to her. So anyways, here's Sam Harris in conversation with um, uh, Anid Mohammed, And uh, she is basically, you can almost hear the sort of like, she's hoping for him to say the right thing. And by right thing, I mean just like the the humane thing. And he doesn't. <laughs> and I have been so happy because, uh, you know, my following of Sam Harris is sometimes like a like a roller coaster. Mm. Then one day there's like, a, oh, this interview with Anne Marie Waters is good. And I'm like, oh, no, Sam. Well, well, that's why? another example. So that's the only thing I've ever seen. From Anne Marie Waters. But you see why then Gad and Ruben are, are are doing some harmful things because they're presenting these people in the best light possible. Okay, okay pause but, it. But so, so let me just un- catch you up on this conversation. So she sees uh, Sam Harris tweet out this conversation with this uh, uh, Anne Marie Waters is interesting and good. And she says that's problematic because she's a bad person. And, and Harris is like, well, but that's all I've seen of hers. <laughs> and then she says, well, that's a perfect illustration of why Dave Rubin and it was it Saad God she's talking about are so bad and toxic because they take this person who is uh, who has been called a Nazi and racist by uh, the UKIP party in Britain and make her seem palatable to people like you. And then theoretically, you, well, not even theoretically, you amplify this person in a positive light even more. And so um, uh, you've got Ainid Muhammad here trying to say, like, don't you see this is the problem? When they charge you with being some type of gateway to the alt-right, this is exactly how you're doing it. And you cannot, it's not enough and she's now taking the tack like it's not enough to say that just you're ignorant about this person. That you're you're you are. Well, ironically, it's the whole con- context thing. Sam Harris says I shouldn't need any extra context for this person. I should just be able to judge it purely off of this one interview with Dave Rubin. I right. mean, Jesus. Presenting these people in the best light possible. Okay, but but so so but do you agree? You, you watched that interview, right? Did do you I, agree that that she came off? I mean, she basically no. sounded like me or or Douglas or someone. I mean, D- Douglas, I my didn't version watch of Douglas. I the interview, okay. but I just... Uh, Pause it. So I he's now, she his is defense is, but in that narrow context, she was good. So you cannot... So 
he is purposely avoid evading the point she's trying to make. The point she's trying to make is that you cannot present this person. This is what's problematic. You're presenting a person is so good when you're not doing any uh, research on him and you're just relying on Dave Rubin. And so Dave Rubin is problematic because he's taking someone who is also not good and is, is selling it to you. And so his defense is like, well, but you know, I, I didn't know, you know, it was like, it's like buying, like the guy showed up and he said, hey, he's got a bunch of fur coats that uh, fell off the back of a, bu I had no idea it was stolen goods. Right. I mean, that's basically it. like, you can't blame me for that, even though I'm a scholar, uh, but go ahead. And I know that she thinks if you're not anti-immigration, as she said to me and Mariam Namazi, then you're pro the rape of white women. Um, right. But I guess, so and she heads this organization called Pegida with Tommy and right. with a, a white genocide guy called uh, Paul Weston, I believe. And um, she, Paul Weston is a guy who thinks that no Muslims should ever be allowed to hold public office, even Muslims like Majid Nawaz. And they're all heading this uh, pro-freedom, supposedly, mm. uh, organization, which, which <laughs> is clearly contradictory because they're Posit. not pro- So she is now telling him, this person's pedigree. She is working with people who are, uh, you know, like w uh, talking about white genocide. She's working with people, officially working with people who say that Muslims can't hold office. Um, she's working. I think Tommy, is that a reference to uh, Tommy Robinson? Yes. Who is uh, like an avowed white supremacist. Um, and so this is all, um, this is all, you know, problematic stuff. Listen to how Harris responds to this. It's fascinating. Freedom. Tommy talks about uh, deporting Muslims. Uh, Paul Weston doesn't want them to be able to hold public office. Anne Marie thinks you're pro-rape of white women if you're not anti-immigration uh, or prepared to let rape happen. And uh, but, but she the, thinks that. But the problem, I mean, again, the, the, I mean, the, this is this is an area where we're in. You know, it, it, this is a gray area in the sense that, you know, she's right. When you look at what's happened in Europe in the last 12 months, you have a lot of you have a lot of people on the left who are prepared to let w white women get raped by Muslim immigrants. I mean, there, there, there are people who are prepared to be raped themselves. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> what? You, you, did, did, did you hear the story of the woman who got raped by three refugees or three you know, non-German speaking migrants? Um, and when she reported this rape, she was so afraid to spark racial tension that she, she claimed she was raped by three German men. And then she, then like, oh, it, it, like 48 hours later, she recanted it and, oh. she, and she described them accurately. But that's, I mean, once but then there's a, there's another story of a German it. girl. Now, wait a second. She's going to go back and forth with the story, but like to cite an anecdote like that as the public intellectual that this guy uh, 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 pretends to be to cite an anecdote like that. Let's just assume and stipulate it's true. I don't know if it's true or not, but let's just assume it's true to cite an anecdote that and say that the left is um, pro rape of white women if they're allowing immigrants in or are prepared to be pro whatever that means to use that one example and to tarnish an entire political ideology with that is just absurd. It's absurd. The, to, to, to posit that you are some type of public intellectual and to make those pronunciations, that is a guy who is afraid of losing his audience. I, I, that's the best thing I can say about that. Continue. The story of the woman who got raped by three uh, refugees or uh, three you know, non-German speaking migrants. Um, and when she reported this rape, she was so afraid to spark racial tension that she she claimed she was raped by three German men. And then she then like it, oh, it, like 48 hours it's... later, she recanted it and, oh. she, and she described them accurately. But that's I mean, one. But then there's a there's another story of a German girl who made up a story about being raped by Muslim immigrants sure. when she wasn't. 
But what, so, but, but what sure, no one it pause seems it. That, sure, sure, that happens. That one anecdote, though, shouldn't shouldn't by the same reasoning, shouldn't that tarnish all um, a, a, a white people who get raped? Like, so you are necessarily uh, prepared. Uh, the rest of society is rest is prepared for people to uh, make up who they're raped by. I mean, this is absurd. This is absurd. This is a guy who's desperately flailing around trying to um, protect some image. And, and you got to ask yourself, why? You know, people ask, like, why I used to call this guy a charlatan. This is why. Is that, that what no one can reasonably dispute now is that there have been, there's been a wave of sexual assaults, which, which, which the left feels some obligation to not report, or at least... Right, to, and that's the problem. What? No one can reasonably dispute that the left in Europe is uh, reluctant to report rapes because of a widespread immigrant. I mean, first of all, you go and you look at the, that. I was looking at the Der Spiegel online. These, uh, the, the reports of these rapes are from places like Facebook pages, uh, you know, outfits called rapefugees.net uh, is a website. Um, these are where these reports came from. It's also the case uh, that Euro some European countries have higher reported instances of rape because they're better at reporting rapes and they don't have a problem of not reporting them. Um, I mean, you know, we don't talk much about Sam Harris as much anymore because he seems to be sort of like, you know, I don't know, maybe reevaluating things or just sort of like uh, trying to ease off when he realizes like uh, maybe maybe my uh, personal uh, wealth and, and fortune is not uh, necessarily something that I, I have no idea. Uh, but that's just disgusting. Yep. And uh, I don't know how people can say that's taken out of context. I would love to see the context. I mean, it's the entire conversation. 